Right now, beneath the surface of Europe's most active volcano, something is moving. Not lava, not magma, an entire mountainside sliding toward the sea at a pace that has never been recorded before. Mount Etna stands 3,357 meters above the coast of Sicily, a towering monument of fire and ash that has erupted hundreds of times throughout recorded history. But the true danger is not what rises from the summit. It is what lies beneath the southeastern flank, a fractured mass of volcanic rock and ancient debris poised above the Ionian Sea. If this flank collapses suddenly, the resulting landslide could displace billions of cubic meters of water. The tsunami that follows would not stay in Sicily, it would race across the Mediterranean. What are scientists seeing that has them so alarmed? Why has this danger been hidden until now? And if the collapse happens, who will have time to escape? The southeastern flank of Etna is not stable. It never has been. For decades, geologists have tracked surface cracks spreading across the volcanic slopes like fractures in old glass. Satellite data from the European Space Agency confirms the movement. The slope is sliding seaward at rates that vary from centimeters to several meters per year, depending on the section measured. But this was only the first warning. For years, scientists believed the movement was shallow, limited to the surface layers of volcanic debris and weathered rock. The working theory suggested a slow, gradual slide that would continue indefinitely without triggering a catastrophic event. That assumption has now been shattered. What makes this situation especially dangerous is the nature of the structure itself. The southeastern flank is not a uniform sheet of rock. It is a patchwork of ancient lava flows, fractured basalt, and unstable volcanic sediments sitting atop a massive fault system. The Pernicana and Tempe fault zones cut through this region like hidden cracks in a dam. Every earthquake, every eruption, every tremor adds stress to these fractures. The flank is not just cracked. It is primed. When a massive landslide enters deep water at high speed, the physics become terrifying. The displaced water has nowhere to go but outward and upward. Within seconds, a wave forms that can tower tens of meters above the ocean's surface. This is not a slow-rising flood. It is a wall of water moving at hundreds of kilometers per hour across open ocean. The mechanism is sometimes called the bathtub effect. Imagine dropping a boulder into a full tub. The water does not simply ripple, it surges violently over the edges. But there is a critical difference between gradual sliding and sudden collapse. If the flank continues to slide slowly, centimeter by centimeter over decades, the sea can absorb the displacement. The water shifts gradually, the energy dissipates, no catastrophic wave forms. However, if the same mass releases suddenly, all at once, the energy transfer is instantaneous. The wave amplitude scales directly with the speed and volume of the collapse. This is why the question of timing matters more than the question of weather. Scientists know that large-scale flank collapses can produce tsunamis capable of crossing entire ocean basins. The 2017 landslide in Greenland's Karatfjord displaced enough water to send a 90-meter wave crashing into a nearby village. In 1958, a rock slide into Alaska's Latuya Bay generated a wave that stripped vegetation from hillsides 524 meters above sea level, the tallest tsunami ever recorded. These events share a common feature. The mountains that collapsed were already fractured, already weakened by geological stress. Nature does not always give warning, and when failure comes, it comes fast. The comparison to Etna is not theoretical. The southeastern flank shows the same structural weaknesses, the same creeping instability, the same potential for sudden catastrophic release. The difference is scale. Etna's flank contains far more material than any fjord landslide, and the Mediterranean is surrounded by densely populated coastlines. What happens in Alaska happens in isolation. What happens at Etna would not. 
For years, the movement of Etna's southeastern flank was monitored primarily from above. Satellites tracked surface deformation with millimeter precision. GPS stations logged the slow, outward creep of benchmarks bolted into the volcanic rock. The data showed consistent movement, alarming but steady. Then, researchers asked a different question. What if the movement extended below sea level? Traditional satellites cannot measure underwater motion. Radar and optical imaging reflect off the ocean's surface, but cannot penetrate the depths. To understand what was happening beneath the waves, scientists needed a different approach. The answer came from acoustic transponders, specialized devices that send sound pulses through the water column and measure how long those pulses take to return. Sound travels through seawater at a known speed, approximately 1,500 meters per second, depending on temperature and salinity. By placing transponders on both the stable seafloor and the potentially moving flank, researchers could measure relative displacement with centimeter-level accuracy. The results changed everything. A joint research effort involving Germany's Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research, Kiel University, and Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology deployed five acoustic transponders off Etna's eastern coast. Three were placed on the suspected sliding block, two were anchored on stable bedrock. Over just eight days of monitoring in 2018, the seafloor sensors detected approximately four centimeters of movement. This was not surface debris shifting under gravity, this was deep structural displacement extending far beneath the waterline. The landslide was not limited to what satellites could see. The sliding structure reaches from the summit craters to the abyssal plain, a single massive block moving as one coherent unit. The implications are profound. If collapse occurs, it will not be a shallow surface failure. It will be a deep-seated catastrophic release involving billions of tons of material. And the signs were already spreading. There is a temptation to dismiss slow movement as inherently safe. If the flank is sliding gradually, the reasoning goes, it will continue to do so indefinitely. The energy will dissipate over time. No sudden failure will occur. This assumption is dangerously wrong. Geological history is filled with examples of slow-moving slopes that failed without warning. The 1963 Viant Dam disaster in Italy began with gradual hillside creep that accelerated suddenly, sending 260 million cubic meters of rock into the reservoir in under 45 seconds. The resulting wave killed nearly 2,000 people. Slow slip events along fault lines show similar behavior. Large crustal blocks can creep for years, absorbing stress gradually, until friction gives way and the entire structure lurches forward. This is not a gradual release of energy. It is a catastrophic one. Etna's flank is exhibiting the same patterns. Mount Etna is not merely active. It is relentlessly active. The volcano has erupted more than 200 times in the past 3,500 years of recorded history. In recent decades, eruptions have occurred almost annually, sometimes multiple times per year. Each eruption brings tremors. Each tremor shakes the fractured flank. The constant vibration acts like a jackhammer on an already cracked foundation. Every pulse of magma rising through the conduit system generates seismic waves that propagate outward through the volcanic edifice. These waves are not powerful enough to trigger collapse individually, but their cumulative effect is significant. Rock that might remain stable under static conditions can fail when subjected to repeated dynamic loading. The relationship between eruptions and flank instability is not direct. Gravity is the primary driver of the slide, not magma pressure. But the two processes are linked. Eruptions destabilize the structure. Earthquakes accelerate the movement. And every cycle of activity brings the flank closer to its breaking point. But the ground had one more secret. Long-term satellite observations from programs like Sentinel-1 and Cosmo SkyMed have tracked Etna's southeastern flank for over a decade. The data reveals a consistent pattern. 
the southeastern slope moves outward and downward at measurable rates. Other sectors of the volcano remain stable. Initially, this asymmetry was interpreted as evidence of shallow instability. The working model suggested that only the upper layers were creeping, while the deep structure remained anchored. The discovery of underwater movement demolished this theory. The realization that the entire flank, from summit to seafloor, is moving as a single unit transformed the risk assessment. If only surface material were involved, a collapse would produce a limited, localized event. With the deep structure engaged, the potential collapse volume increases by orders of magnitude. This is not a surface problem, it is a structural one. The international response to this discovery has been swift but constrained. Monitoring networks have expanded, but prediction remains impossible. GEOMAR continues to maintain acoustic transponder arrays off the coast. INGV operates a dense network of seismometers, GPS stations, and tilt meters across the volcano. Collaborative research programs between German, Italian, and other European institutions share data in near real time. But watching is not the same as warning. The fault systems that define the sliding block act as boundaries separating stable rock from unstable rock. The Pernicana Fault runs roughly east-west across the northern margin of the slide zone. The Timpe Faults trend northeast along the southeastern coast. Together, they outline a wedge-shaped mass that is mechanically distinct from the rest of the volcano. Scientists can measure where the movement is happening, they cannot predict when it will accelerate. In the village of Sant'Alfio, perched on Etna's eastern slope, the Ferraro family tends the same vineyard their ancestors planted three generations ago. The volcanic soil is rich, the views spectacular, the wine exceptional. But lately the ground has felt different. Cracks have appeared in the stone wall that borders their property, splitting the masonry along a line that runs almost exactly parallel to the mapped trace of the Timpe Fault. The local school closed for a week after tremors opened fissures in the foundation. At night, the faint rumble of distant seismic activity vibrates through the bedrock. The Ferraros do not speak openly about leaving. The land is their identity, their livelihood, their history but the cracks in the wall grow wider each year. We have always lived with the mountain, says Lucia Ferraro, her words carrying the weight of centuries, but the mountain is changing and we do not know what that means. What came next shocked even the scientists. For millions of years, the southeastern flank has remained attached to Etna's main edifice, the forces holding it in place, friction along the basal surface, cohesion within the rock mass, buttressing from adjacent structures, have exceeded the forces pulling it downward. This equilibrium is not permanent. It is a balance waiting to tip. The correlation between above water and underwater movement confirms that the entire structure is engaged. When GPS stations on the surface detect acceleration, acoustic transponders on the seafloor register matching displacement. The flank is not fragmenting into multiple independent blocks, it is moving as a unified mass. This increases the danger enormously. A fragmented collapse would release energy in stages, producing smaller waves over time. A unified collapse would release all the energy at once, maximizing wave amplitude. The comparison to slow-slip earthquakes is instructive. Large fault segments that creep gradually can still produce devastating seismic events when the accumulated stress exceeds the frictional resistance. The same physics applies to Etna. The worst-case scenario is not speculation, it is physics. If the entire southeastern flank releases simultaneously, estimates suggest between 10 and 40 cubic kilometers of material could enter the Ionian Sea within minutes. The initial wave height near the source could exceed 30 meters. Coastal areas of eastern Sicily would have less than 10 minutes of warning. But the danger does not stop at Sicily. Seismic modeling conducted by institutions including INGV and international collaborators shows waves propagating westward across the Mediterranean, reaching the coasts of southern Italy, Malta, Libya, Greece, and beyond within hours. 
the energy would attenuate with distance, but even waves of several meters could devastate low-lying harbors and beaches. The Mediterranean is essentially a closed basin. Waves reflect off coastlines and interfere constructively, prolonging the hazard. Some models suggest oscillations could continue for 24 hours or more after the initial collapse, and no one can say when. Scientists cannot predict when a collapse might occur. The honest answer is uncertainty. The flank could continue sliding slowly for centuries. It could accelerate gradually, giving years of warning, or it could fail suddenly, triggered by a large earthquake or volcanic event, without any clear precursor. The monitoring systems in place are designed to detect changes, not to predict outcomes. Recent seismic activity has heightened concern. A magnitude 3.3 earthquake struck near the summit in late 2024, followed by a magnitude 5.1 event offshore. Shallow earthquakes are particularly dangerous for slope stability because their energy is concentrated near the surface where the fractures lie. The tectonic setting of the region adds complexity. Etna sits near the convergence of the African and Eurasian plates, in a zone influenced by the subduction of the Ionian microplate beneath Calabria. This tectonic environment produces both volcanic activity and regional seismicity. Larger earthquakes, magnitude 6 or greater, have occurred historically and will occur again. Any such event could provide the trigger that transforms slow creep into sudden collapse. Etna's position is unique. It is not directly atop a classic subduction boundary, but the plate interactions that drive Mediterranean tectonics influence its behavior. Magma rises through a complex system of conduits fed by deep mantle sources. The resulting eruptions are frequent, varied, and impossible to predict with precision. Earthquake swarms often precede major eruptions. Clusters of small earthquakes at similar depths typically indicate magma forcing its way through rock, breaking and fracturing the conduit walls. INGV records hundreds of such events every month. Most lead to minor activity or nothing at all, but every swarm increases the stress on an already fractured edifice. The possibility that a large eruption could trigger flank collapse is not dismissed by researchers. It is simply unprovable until it happens. When discussions turn to volcanic hazards, attention usually focuses on lava flows, ash fall, and pyroclastic density currents. These are deadly, but localized. Evacuation can save lives if warnings come in time. A flank collapse tsunami would be different. The speed of the wave, the breadth of the impact zone, and the difficulty of issuing effective warnings create a scenario where casualties could be catastrophic. Coastal populations from Catania to Syracuse, from Malta to Libya, would have little time to reach high ground. Harbors, beaches, and waterfront infrastructure across the Mediterranean would face destruction. Lava can be outrun, tsunamis cannot. The evidence is clear. Etna's southeastern flank is moving. The movement extends from the summit to the seafloor. The structure is unified, not fragmented. Every earthquake, Every eruption, every year of accumulated stress brings the system closer to failure. What remains unknown is when. Geological processes do not operate on human timescales. The collapse could occur tomorrow or in a thousand years, but the physical conditions for catastrophe are present now, documented by satellites and seafloor sensors, tracked by international teams and understood with a clarity that previous generations never possessed. The mountain that has given Sicily its fertile soil, its dramatic landscapes, and its cultural identity now poses a threat that extends far beyond its slopes. The coastlines of the Mediterranean are home to tens of millions of people. How many of them know that a single volcanic flank, already moving, already fractured, already primed, could send a wave racing toward their shores without warning?